Big news today on the COVID front. On the line with us is our old buddy, Dr. Eric Feigelding, the epidemiologist and senior fellow with the Federation of American Scientists, the first whistleblower of the COVID pandemic, former faculty member and researcher at the Harvard Medical School and Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Uh, Dr. Eric Ding is his uh, Twitter handle, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, uh, or F.A. Scientists, uh, the uh, uh, F.A. Scientists on Twitter. Uh, Dr. Feigelding, welcome back to the program. So uh, the two big topics I wanted to discuss with you, I'll just toss them both out and let you go off on it, is number one, we've got Omicron BA2 coming. Uh, what does the experience of other countries tell us we should expect here in the United States? And number two, your thoughts on the FDA just an hour or so ago authorizing the second booster for people over 50 years old. Yeah, thanks for having me. I think BA2 is really worrisome. And CDC just today reported that BA2 has cr crisscrossed and exceeded a BA1 for the first time. So it's now dominant at 55% across the U.S. And this hits our uh, forecast exactly of the equilibrium um, point in which right now cases are plateau because you have declining cases of the old and surging cases of new, and now they're equal. And now that means April, we're gonna get a surge. And in the UK, where they already had dominant BA2s for over a month since late February, they're having cases rise, hospitalizations surge, and deaths surge. And we do not want that. And just last week, I think in one week in the UK, um, where BA2 is dominant, uh, about uh, six to nine percent of the entire country tested newly positive in one week. Six to nine percent of wow. the entire UK population tested positive. When, uh, so this, positive so this is week. whacking people who've already been vaccinated, exactly. already been and, boosted, and already been sick with COVID. Yeah, exactly. Like UK has like 99% of the people with some form of antibodies, whether it's from vaccinations or previous infection. But BA2 and Omicron in general is so transmissible and so penetrant against previous immunity because it is so different from Wuhan. Our vaccines are against Wuhan uh, or spike protein. And so it's we're not trained for the Omicron BA2. That's why, you know, in terms of infection protection, you know, uh, you know, Obama got it recently. Uh, Jen Psaki got it recently. Many other individuals got reinfected yeah. recently. Jen Psaki Luckily, got it twice. Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole thing. Reinfection, even there. So this, so some people feel like they're invulnerable with hybrid immunity. It's not. You know, Jen Psaki was uh, vaccinated and she got infected before, and that didn't protect her against BA2. That said, vaccines with boosters will protect you against hospitalizations and death very well, like 90, 95%. But there is one, some waning, and especially among the elderly and immunocompromised. If you're immunocompromised, you can already get your fourth shot. Um, but you know, if now their FDA has said that if you're over the age of 50 or older, you can get a fourth shot. Now that's still pending CDC final approval in the coming days, but uh, it is coming. And I think the four shot will reduce infection risk even further and improve your odds against being hospitalized and, and dying even mm -hmm. further. But again, this is where so I always it, emphasize. It, it, excuse me, did, did I misstate that? Because my, my read of, the, I, I got it from the Los Angeles Times this morning, was that the FDA had approved that fourth shot. I thought that meant everybody could go out and get it. Does Not it still, yet. Yeah, oh, it There's still has to go through another hoop. There's the FDA approval authorization, right. and then there's a CDC approval. Uh, it's only after the CDC approval can you go out and get it. I see. That said, if you're currently immunocompromised, you can already get your fourth shot. That's already been approved. Right. But you're expecting um, the CDC approval by the end of this within week? Within days. Within days. Like, yeah. either as early as tonight, or, but I think that it's going to be a couple more days until they're meeting. So right. I think it's probably end of the week, I would say. Yeah, okay. So that's good news. But BA2 is is the worst news because, you know, this is why I always tell people, your boosting is good, but boosting also wanes, hence, you're gonna, you know, this fourth shot. Um, and the thing is, it's, it's kind of like if you're vaccinated, it's kind of closing like, you know, two lanes of a four-lane highway. Yes, you've your bridge won't collapse, right? Your highway bridge won't collapse. Uh, you're not going to die, but the thing is, like, even if you close the um, several lanes of the highway, it's still allowing a lot of virus traffic through you. 
So even if you're not gonna have a collapse of your bridge and uh, go to hospital, you could still carry it to someone else who's immunocompromised. Right. And if anything, if you feel more invulnerable, that actually means sometimes some people will go to more nightclubs, more bars and restaurants than they did before. So they now travel on more bridges uh, than they did before and uh, increase the likelihood they could carry it home to them. So I always tell people you have to be careful cautious. Even if you feel you're healthy, someone around you, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, may not be as healthy as you, and you uh, being uncareful, careless, could actually bring the virus to them. And you know, most of the case, like China right now is having a BA2 as well. And they found like 90% of all the cases, they do mass testing. And most of the cases they find are asymptomatic. And that's inherently why you know, it's silently passing through you, even if you don't have symptoms, even if you're not gonna get sick. It, it will eventually reach someone who is vulnerable. And that's ultimately, you know, once you find the vulnerable, that's ultimately who what drives up hospitalization in cases. Right. So don't spread the virus. One, one of my, uh, uh, well, I, I, I shouldn't get in. I was going to talk about one of my kids, but um, uh, let me put this in the context of our business here. Um, you know, we've got four of us in the studio. and Now we're spaced out really, really well. We've got individual air filters with UV light in them to kill viruses for each one of us. Um, I think we're doing pretty good, and we're all living very, very carefully. Um, but uh, it, would it be wise, particularly given that if you said 90% of those BA2s are asymptomatic, of course, that's among a heavily vaccinated population. Um, would it be wise for us like every Wednesday or every Monday or something to just like routinely test all of ourselves? Is that something that a, a small business should be doing or a family? Yeah, I think, you know, if you can, uh, if you have the financial resources, and this is always where the inequality comes in, I think mass testing is, is good. Um, I think, uh, you know, if if you guys can get a hold of uh, such tests, doing it on a regular basis is good. Oh, I've got a box cases of Cases right now are still low. At the moment, cases are low, but as cases arise in April, I think you should start thinking about that around mid-April as cases are definitely rising. And they're already rising in the, in the Northeast, in New England already, because um, we're oftentimes seeded by BA2 earlier there right. than the rest of the country. I think it is... But I'm really glad you have HEPA filters and and um, UV disinfection in your air systems. HEPA filters are really good for small rooms and uh, classrooms. I recommend them for everyone. But of course, ventilation is the cheapest. And don't buy the HEPA-like, HEPA-grade, uh, you know, HEPA quality. Like you want to get the authentic HEPA filters, not the other knockoffs. Right. And there are a lot of knockoffs out there. And that's unfortunate. We don't have time to get into them. But, you know, buy the authentic HEPA filters. Right. But, of course, ventilation is still the best. I, I you know, back in the uh, back in the 80s and 90s and, and even the early 2000s, well, very early, um, I, I owned a couple of businesses that did business in, in Taiwan and in China and in Japan and spent a fair amount of time traveling in that part of the world and in South Korea as well. And... Uh, what I found was that during flu season, people just routinely wore masks, and, and particularly people who had any kind of symptoms, who thought that they might be sick, they wore a mask as a, as a uh, you know, as respect to not transmit the disease to other people. Um, I mean, and this was decades ago. This, this is, you know, because very high population density there. Do you think that that's the new normal for America and that, and that we're going to be seeing, you know, about one or two Omicron shots every year just going forward? I mean, I saw the Washington Post piece, I think it was, or maybe it was the New York Times about, you know, from the, the experts on viral mutations saying, you know, this is far from the end of this thing. Yeah, COVID is definitely dragging on much longer than any of us anticipated originally. And I think, the pro I think we need to get to a new normal. The question is, of course, U.S., a lot of people don't want to wear a mask. So I always think of like COVID as there's several legs of, of stopping it. There's masks, and especially N95, KN95 premium masks. If you wear it, it's effective. If you don't wear it, it's not. Uh, mass testing is good, but testing is obviously limited in quantity and capacity. And many places are shutting down mass testing centers, so people can't get them for free. Um, uh, and by, I think ventilation disinfection is, uh, in addition to vaccines, is the other leg. I think you have to do several legs, uh, 
you have to do two or three of the legs in order to uh, maximally control this virus. If you don't want to wear a mask, then fine, get vaccinated and ventilate the air and get tested. But like, do at least two or three of these four things. And if you do them, we can dramatically cut down the cases. And in certain ways, I like ventilation and air disinfection uh, in a unique way because it doesn't require human behavioral compliance. Getting people to mask is very difficult. Getting people to vaccinate you know, for those who are anti-vax is difficult. But you know what? Then do the testing and do the ventilation disinfection, especially installing them in public restaurants, some, um, bars, nightclubs will be a huge, huge boon because it would really, really make those environments much more safer and doesn't require human intervention. I think together we can end it, but if you just are absent and don't want to do any of the four, then you're gonna drag this pandemic on long. Yeah, there you go, Dr. Eric Feigelding. Follow him on Twitter, his Twitter feed is amazing. Dr. Eric Ding, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G on Twitter. Dr. Feigelding, thanks so much for Thank dropping you. by today.